I'm Bracken. I work on the partnership team here at Busy Busy and super excited to have Diane joining us today. She is the job costing expert to really say it in, in a plain way, but she's much more than that. She's published speaker or published author, a speaker. She has over 30 years in the accounting industry. Wow, I need to finish my coffee this morning. So we're really excited to have her. She's a professional QuickBooks trainer, and she also won Pro, Pro Advisor of the Year last year, and she's won, I mean, just tons of different awards. So seeing her win the QuickBooks Pro Advisor of the Year for 2022 was super, super awesome for, yeah, and you for guys us as were her partner. There and too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was great to be able to, to see her do that. But she's viewed as a, a leader in her field of expertise. And yeah, I mean, we're just excited to have her here today and, and pick her brain about job costing and how it can, you know, benefit companies. And if you are currently job costing, how you can improve. So everybody, we always have room for improvement, right? We have been teamed up with InfoPlus Accounting for quite a while now, but a little blurb about them. They Diane founded InfoPlus Accounting and BuildYourNumbers.com in 1994. And just what her goal is and where she set out to, as it reads on the screen here, empower residential construction company owners and, and their support teams to, to be more effective and be more profitable. It really aligns with what Busy Busy's set out to do as well. So while she helps everybody get into depth with their numbers and figure out what's going on, Busy Busy helps you gather those numbers so that she can help you do that. So partnership and the reason why we've teamed up is, is pretty, pretty easy there. But I could talk pleasantries about both companies all day. So instead, what we'll do is hop into all the fun questions we have prepared for Diane and would love to have you guys chat in and also ask questions through the Q&A. We'd love to have some of your questions on there. And if not, we we have some good ones prepared. So we will jump right into that. Do you uh, have anything else you want to hit on, Diane, before I start quizzing you with questions? <laughs> no, I'm I'm just here to try to answer questions that you might have or that other folks might have around job costing, accounting, you know, how to get the most out of your numbers. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right. So I have the chat turned on. Everybody should be able to chat in there. We always love to hear where you guys are from as well. Um, I'm from Utah, if you're just now joining, and Diane is over in Michigan. So it's fun that we've been able to find each other and, and partner up and all that good stuff. So chat in where you're from. And if any questions pop up as we're going, we, we'd love to hear them from you. So yeah, I will actually, before we even do that, Diane, why don't you tell us a, a little bit from your point of view of, of why you started Info Plus and why job costing is so important. I mean, that that leads us right into our into our first questions. Okay, well, uh, my background is as a CPA. And from my CPA tenure, I went into banking for 13 years, did internal auditing and also ended up in financial management where we started doing product line costing for the bank. And when I decided to start my company, I, I knew that I wanted to focus somewhere I wasn't sure exactly where, but at a networking luncheon, one of the ladies came up to me and she said, you know what? She said, my husband's a contractor. And she said, I, I handle his books. She had a, a background in accounting, but she said, you know, you need to go over that Home Builders Association because the builders, man, they really need help. And so I said, okay. So another associate that I knew from the bank also knew the Home Builders Association president and got me signed up. And I did a tabletop within like two days of starting my company tabletop, meaning, you know, standing oh, there wow. and telling people what you do. So yeah. uh, that's how I got that's involved so on the construction side and job costing, because that was one of the first things that people started asking about. So. Mm -hmm. Very cool. That, yeah, it's funny. Um, I think the construction industry, there's so much room to improve and we're all so behind on on growing into technology and stuff. So it's really fun to to be in this industry right now. Okay. So, I mean, we know why, why you got into job costing, but for starters, I mean, for those who are joining who don't do job costing yet, what is job costing? Okay. Well, at a very, at a, you know, the most basic level, it means that you're going to track the income 
from the different jobs that you do, each job that you do, and the costs that are related to getting that work done. And so you can do it at a very, very, very simple level, or there are other layers that you can add in to also provide more information and increase by using that knowledge, to increase your profitability. Yeah, for sure. I think that that's super helpful. Well, I mean, you, you answered this a little bit already, increasing your, your profitability is, is a goal for everyone, but can you go into a little bit more depth about why job costing is important for a business and its success? Well, job costing is going to help you see what kinds of work that you're doing most profitably. So if you can see that on job A, you made a 40% gross profit margin. We can talk more about what's gross profit, but <laughs> basically the income less the cost to produce the job. And on job B, you made a 12% gross profit margin. And they're kind of different kinds of jobs right there. That's going to tell you something. Okay. Either you there are a lot of different things you could look at on both of those jobs, including who is managing the job, what were your estimates, how did the pricing occur, and so on. But a very simple level would be that maybe on DEX, just I'm going to just use that as an example, maybe on DEX you made 40% and on kitchens you made 12%. Well, would you want to do more DEX or more kitchens? So. Yeah. It's, that's going to give you some really basic information right off the bat. But For you sure. can we, also look inside even deeper to see what other elements are involved in, in the profitability of those jobs. Definitely. And what I was going to say is, is we've talked about that before, too, where figuring out who your, your winner jobs and your loser jobs are is so important. Do you want to do decks and make 6% or do you want to do kitchens and, and make 12 So it makes total sense there. So with all of your experience in the industry, tell us some of the results that your clients have seen when either implementing job costing or taking job costing to another level. Well, one example is that when you can see the actual costs coming through on a job, and let's say you're doing a time and materials job where you're passing the cost through and then having a markup on it. When you look at your job cost, you can see all those costs coming through and then check and make sure that you've invoiced. And if you see a cost coming through and you haven't invoiced for it, then it's time to invoice. Because you know what? If you don't invoice for that plus the markup, guess who gets to pay for that particular cost? Not the, the company, customer. <laughs> not the customer. Yeah, that's like, exactly. so, you know, if you're in business to give away free things, you know, that's, you know, that's lovely that you're, I'd you like come you to over come to my house if that's the case. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. On the other hand, if you have a system where you can track those particular costs as they come through and make sure that they're invoiced appropriately, that's just, I mean, that's just one example and that would be for a time and materials job. So, you know, the gap between not charging and charging is pretty big. And it means that if you don't charge appropriately, it's just going to come out of the owner's pocket or the company's pocket. And of course, if a company isn't successful, then what is it they say? If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Well, if, yeah. if, if mama is the company isn't happy, then it's not good for anybody. It's not good for the company owner, for the employees, or for their customers. So that would just be one example, but there are many other kinds of examples where you can use that information. Yeah, I think I think it would be cool to to be able to look back on all of the clients who you've helped and see where their business was when it started versus where it is now, I mean, even for those clients who have only been maybe working with you for for a year or or even that, like, it would be really cool to to be able to see that. Let's you go back a... to that. If I can, let's go back to that prior thing where I said, you know, one kind of work you're making this percentage, and another mm -hmm. kind of work you're making a, a different percentage. So one of my clients found out that his residential, when he broke things down by types of work, he found out that he was making 10% more 
gross profit. Okay, that means that not that he was getting 10%, but he was making 10% more gross profit than he was on his commercial jobs. And you know what? He ended up changing the whole direction of his company, of his marketing, his website changed, and he decided to go ahead and focus on that higher gross revenue particular type of work. And there was there were other subjective things that were involved in that, but you know, the dollars and seeing that difference is what pointed out to him kind of what some of what he instinctually already knew, but then he could move forward with confidence and going, yep, I'm I'm doing the right thing. Okay. And knowing that I can make a higher percentage, I can spend a little bit of money to redo my website and and change my operations and expand my business. Because at one point he was going, well, you know, I don't know if I'm going to bring somebody else in to help me or not. <laughs> and just by being able to see the difference and then being able to do projections, having those numbers and the confidence, you know, it helped him yep. change the strategy of his company and his overall profitability. That's really, really cool to see. So would you say that that's one of your like favorite client success stories is seeing him change his entire business to to match what is going to be most beneficial for him? Well, yeah, that, I mean, that's a favorite one. But as, mm -hmm. as I work with people, people take my class. I've got pre-done classes and so on that a lot of people take. But when I'm working with them one-to-one, -one, I think it's just that sense of control that people get when they can actually see their numbers. They know that all of their production costs have been assigned to a job. They know which costs actually can't be assigned to jobs because sometimes there are production costs that go into what we call non-job specific, meaning, yeah, yeah. okay, I, I can't assign the cost of a saw blade, okay, to a specific right. job. And of course, there are other things, shop supplies and, you know, the cost of vehicles and, and equipment and so on. So those go into what we call non-job specific, but being able to see those and understand, you know, what am I making on individual jobs? What is it costing me for employees who work on different jobs? And what is their fully burdened rate? So that I, I know that the information I'm seeing is accurate. You know, that gives people confidence. It gives them a sense of having things be under control. And knowing what's going on is better than having what I call free-floating anxiety of going, well, I wonder how are things going? What did I make, you know, when I did this job? Man, it took us a lot of extra time or we had to buy a lot of extra materials or what was wrong? <laughs> so yeah. being able to look into the job costing information it gives them the knowledge to be able to move forward. So, yeah, there are big success stories, but I think more so it's a matter of having that sense of control and really knowing what's going on in different aspects of the company. Yeah, for sure. And I, I like what you said, too, because we talk a lot about figuring out the, the winner jobs versus the loser jobs, but it's also figuring out what type of jobs are each of my individual employees the most profitable on or the most productive on? So yeah, I like that you pointed that out as, as well. I I think it's important to, to be able to distinguish as well because we have a lot of people joining us today and, and I'm sure they all come from different size companies. So how can job costing be helpful for both small and large construction companies because we run into a lot of people busy as he goes to a lot of trade shows and we'll run into people who are like oh my my company's too small to to need a software to need an app to track time and it's like okay well like what's small like like what do you mean small now oh we have 15 employees or oh we have 10 employees and it's like no that's that is when it is extremely important to, to be able to know your numbers so yeah tell us a little bit about how job costing and knowing your numbers can benefit companies of all sure. sizes. Okay, if you don't have any employees, okay, you might be here even uh, if you don't have employees, although I would imagine a lot of the people that Busy Busy reaches out to are folks with employees. But if you don't have any employees and you're kind of a standalone handyman and you know, you're the one that goes out and buys everything and 
you work on one job at a time and you can look in your checkbook, you probably don't need job costing. Okay. Because you're going to carry it all in your head. But as soon as you start getting two or three jobs running at the same time, you can't hold that all in your head. It's just not, it's not possible. If you're focusing on getting the work done and meeting your client expectations and doing all the other things that are required to keep your business running, it's just, why would you want to try to keep all that in your head? <laughs> it's just too much to take take care of. And then, of course, sometimes people say, well, I just look at my checkbook. Well, that's not really a good indicator either because money coming in and money going out don't happen simultaneously on the same day. So your checkbook is not a very good way to look at things either. In fact, you need an accounting system, something that's going to track the cash in, the cash out, and what jobs you're working on. So I'd say as soon as you get to the point where you've got maybe two to three employees and you're running two or three jobs simultaneously, you're going to need an accounting system and job costing. Now, if you're a handyman, you're still going to need an accounting system. You have to report to the government. But if you want information to run your company effectively and you want objective information, you'll probably need an accounting system and at least very basic job costing to know what you're making on those jobs. And you can use that as a feedback loop. One of the many benefits is by looking at your results and saying, oh gosh, how can I make this type of job go better the next time? How do I get better at estimating? How do I get better at controlling what's going on in the process? So many, many benefits from having that information at hand. But no, Lots of times I see people get to the point where they realize that they need job costing it is quite often in the six, seven hundred thousand dollar gross revenue range. But in reality, the longer you put it off, I mean, it's just going to be a bigger job to put it in place. So the sooner you put it in place, the better. Better. That so with planting that, the tree, <laughs> okay? Yeah, the it's sooner a you do it, to plant a tree today, right? Yeah, very true. So we have a couple of questions coming in regarding like seeing systems that can help with job costing. And if we were going to talk about Busy Busy today, so just to, to clarify, we're not going to be showing the Busy Busy product today or any of the Info Plus resources today. We want to discuss with you guys the benefits of reviewing those and implementing them. And if you're already a user of either of the systems, then you can know how to further grow with each of our our businesses and your business, I guess is what I'm trying to say there. So I wanted to just let everybody know that because of, of the questions and chats that are coming in. But uh, alongside that, somebody chatted in a, a great question and that's what are the top three or more things which is what are that are very important when you're starting with job costing? And that kind of ties into to my next question too. So it was perfect timing for that. Okay. Well, one of the very first things, if you're going to do job costing, is that you need to have a good accounting structure to use as the recipient of your information. And of course, one of the primary things in any accounting system is to have a good, what we accountants call chart of accounts. Many of you guys are probably familiar with that term. And we want to make sure that your chart of accounts is set up in a way where you know, income is easy, okay? <laughs> you've, got, you've got a line item for your income. Sometimes you might want to break it out into different kinds of income. But then to also have your production costs organized and grouped. And in QuickBooks, that's easy because they use something called cost of goods sold. But you might want to think of it as production cost. So you make sure that your chart of accounts has accounts for things like your direct labor compensation, payroll taxes, employee benefits, and so on. And we could maybe touch on labor burden a little bit later, but those are all those extra costs to have people out working in the field. And then of course, materials and subcontractors and some of those other costs. And I also like for us to put in the production costs, there's what we called earlier non-job specific, you know, fuel, insurance, vehicles and some of those types of things, shop supplies, 
But if you get all of those into your production costs, then you're going to be able to see within your reports your income minus the cost of producing your income, which is what gives you a subtotal called gross profit. So that's the very first thing that needs to be put in place. And then if you have employees, you need to track their time and convert their time into cost. So time, I, we're always fond of saying time does not equal cost, but yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> okay, but you have to get that time converted into payroll because payroll is your cost and as well as all those other costs that go along with payroll and having your employee on board. And then the third thing is to assign all the other costs assigned to jobs, the materials, the subcontractors, you know, permits, licenses, rented equipment, things like that assigned out to specific jobs as well. Does that kind of answer the question of maybe the top three things? Yeah. yeah, I think for companies who are wanting to get started with job costing, knowing where to start is is really, really important. So let's let's pause on companies who are wanting to start job costing just for a minute. And and let's talk a little bit about how a company who is already attributing time to a job can take job costing next level or what we we call it in busy busy is is cost coding and tracking time to a cost code so what would you say to a company who is is tracking time to a job but wants to take it to another level and and start tracking time to a task or a phase okay so i mean sure your basic job costing level if you just put all your labor cost into a job that's certainly better than not doing that. However, in most cases, when you get into any kind of complexity in a project, if it's if you're building a home from scratch, if you're doing remodeling work, if you're even doing more complex handyman types of things, there are phases to getting the work done. And the more you know about what each phase is going to cost, or has cost in the past, the better you're going to be at estimating and assuming what's going to be coming at you in the future. So if you can split the phases of the job, and I like to ask people to put those things in order of the way things happen. Now, there are a few things that happen up front that we like to call general conditions, okay, the kinds of things that are going to occur throughout the life of the job. But in general, there's a progression to the way that people do work. And not every job is gonna have every stage in it, but we wanna just say, well, on the most complex jobs, what are all the stages? Then you have to decide if I'm gonna ask my people to try, and, and so those become your cost codes. And then if you're going to ask your people to track time, you have to decide what level of detail do you want them to track their time at? So, I think one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is maybe they try to get, they might estimate it at really detailed level, you know, step by step by step. Mm -hmm. But asking people who are in the job to assign their time at a really, really detailed level, it sometimes just isn't possible. In other words, if somebody's yeah. framing for them to say, well, I'm framing the front bedroom, <laughs> I'm framing the, the bathroom, now I'm framing the living room that wouldn't be very practical. Yeah, realistic. Okay. So, but maybe recording that they're working on framing would be probably good enough for you. The estimator may need to be more detailed, but the person on the job recording their time, you probably want to look at a more high level, <laughs> how you would want them to track their time. And, and I want to touch on that as well, because Dan brought up a, a great point. We have companies all the time who who start using Busy Busy or are using Busy Busy and are like, hey, this is what we're doing. We've we've really mastered having our guys or girls track time to a specific project. But like Diane said, and we want to take it to the next level. Where do we start? And same thing. It's We always recommend starting with a really broad overview. So three to five very basic cost codes or tasks to start tracking time to. And then as you guys 
build that muscle memory and you start seeing the success of it, you can pick and choose where you want to now go into more detail, like Diane said. And and we're we, Diane and I may work in an office, but we're also not blind to the idea that it is hard to get off a ladder and now change and then go do this and then go change that because you guys are on a job site, you're busy. So with that being the case, Busy Busy also has an end of day job costing tool where at the end of the day, you can sit down for a minute and actually go into a little bit more detail on those five basic cost codes and hit into it a little further. So as far as taking it to the next level, I think that those are both really great ways to go about it. And we see companies on our side and Diane sees them on her side who have huge success from that. Yeah, you know, and you brought up something interesting there is recording your time within the day is extremely important. Okay, so let's see, this is Tuesday. Okay, what did you have for lunch on Friday, Bracken? I would have to go back and look at our internal chat and see what they brought into our lunch because I have no idea. No okay, idea. so what happens when people have paper timesheets and let's say that they're paid every two weeks, when do you think they turn those paper timesheets in? Probably after they're due. <laughs> yeah, after they're due, that's true. Yeah, because yeah, because the person in the office might say, "Okay, I got to have those timesheets on Monday because I got to do payroll by Wednesday." So then, you know, they start straggling in and so on, and most of those get prepared. Do you think guys are filling those out? I say guys. Okay. Do you think people are filling those out every day as they go? Nope. I mean, yeah. we, we know that they're not, right? Exactly. I would say 95% of the time they're not. Exactly. So. Yeah. So then, you know, the whole concept of being out in the field and being able to record, even if it's only once a day, but knowing that and getting it in and having somebody else take a look and make sure that they're doing it is is a thousand times more effective than, you know, having folks turn in a crumpled, dirty paper timesheet yeah, a day too late yeah. where somebody has to try to interpret it. So I'm yeah. I'm just talking about the value of busy busy there. But you know, getting that information in and having it be accurate is another major piece of the puzzle. So not just having it be guesstimates. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, I think those are great ways to to start taking it to the ne next level. And for companies who are saying both like, or or for business owners who are like. I don't have time for job costing either at all. I don't have time to, to start doing it or for companies who are tracking time to a job and long-term they want to, you know, take it to the next level, but they don't, <clears throat> they say they don't have time. What, what is your response to that? Well, I think the first thing is if, if we don't have time, we have to be really careful about where we spend our time. Right. And let's say we're spending our time doing something that isn't effective. That's not a very good use of our time. So if we're spending our time working on jobs that give us a very low gross profit margin, as well as jobs that maybe have a higher gross profit margin, that's not a very good use of our time. So I think as Brian Tracy has said, I'm not sure where he got the rates, but he said, you know, an hour spent in planning saves 10 hours of work. Okay, so maybe maybe the ratio is only one hour of planning to five hours of work. But the issue is, is that job costing is going to let you know where to spend your time. So a relatively small amount of energy learning about job costing, a relatively low cost of implementing job costing in relationship to the returns that you're going to get is really, I think, the biggest reason to say that the quote unquote reason or excuse, however you want to put it, of not having enough time doesn't hold a lot of water. The main thing is, is that you need to be spending your time where it can be most effectively used. And so lots of times people say, well, how long is it going to take me to learn how to do job costing? And uh, I say, you know, if you've got some good courses to look at, 15 to 25 hours of, you know, some in-depth 
information gathering and understanding. And then maybe the person in the office who's doing it, it might take a little bit longer to get into more specifics. But that's a pretty small expenditure of time in relationship to the big payoffs that you're going to get in terms of expending your time more effectively and more profitably. So time is one of those relative things. <laughs> you know, we make time for the yeah. things that are important. Just sometimes we have to stop and figure out what's important and what's going to give me the biggest return for the time investment. Does yeah. that I I think when, when we chatted about this last, when we had the CEO of Busy Busy on here, Isaac, you and him were, were talking a bit about that. And really what it boils down to is you don't have time not to, which, you know, I get it. We're all busy, but I, yeah, I think exactly what you said is you, you really don't have time not to. I see quite a few questions coming in about seeing the software again. So I'm going to throw, Ryan is actually going to throw a link in there that can schedule some time for you guys to see the busy, busy software. Okay. Um, and then we're also going to answer some of the, the other questions that have come in through the chat. But before we do that, well, nope, actually, let, let's do that one. So Vicky's asking, nope, sorry, Vicky, not answering that one. I meant to answer the one above, <laughs> but I will get to you. Jenny's asking, how do you handle salary employees whose hours need to be recorded to a specific project or job for payroll cost tracking? So Diane, I mean, we we work with a lot of the same clients, and I'm sure there's plenty of your clients who use Busy Busy who are on salary. And walk walk us through why you still recommend salary employees doing that, and then I can hit on how they can do that in Busy Busy. Okay, salaried employees. If you're using a software like QuickBooks, when the salaried employees time gets assigned to jobs, it gets prorated or split up across the jobs that that person is working on. Now, we don't want to, let's say it's somebody who who spent 20 hours on jobs and 25 hours in the office, okay? We would want to account for all of their hours so that the costs get allocated or assigned appropriately or proportionally. So you wouldn't want to just account for 20 hours of their time because then that would be, you know, way too much cost loaded into just the jobs that that they worked on. So we have special jobs lots of times that we set up for admin, for owners, for salespeople, as well as not job specific for vacation, holiday time, and so on. So we want to make sure that the salaried person's time is assigned appropriately based on the number of hours that they're being paid for. Now, that said, if they worked a 60-hour week, the amount that would go out to each job would be lower than if they worked a 40-hour week. So keeping that in mind. But, you know, the nice thing is the software will do all of those calculations in, in the background yeah. for you. So, Yeah, and uh, I mean, Diane, Diane hit it already, is the, the Busy Busy software is going to do that for you. And when we work with with salaried employees, it it isn't where they're going for their main focus of of time and getting paid because we know that they're going to get paid forty hours, right? But it's it's giving them the opportunity to be more profitable and 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 perform their skill in the trade, and then in turn from that, when when they're seeing those numbers and they're becoming more profitable for the company, that oftentimes from what I've seen previous clients do is that then turns into to bonuses, which motivates those salary employees to keep track of what they're doing. Okay, so another question here. So Vicky's asking if we have slides or steps that will show the information you need to be able to start job costing with with a software or without a software, I think is is what that is. So I think Diane will be able to hit on that really well. As far as with the busy software, we are going to help you get started, and we're more than happy to walk you through what it looks like. But as far as not having a software in line, how do you recommend getting started there? I mean, technically, I suppose you could go out and kind of design your own system inside a spreadsheet. Okay, I've got a blog article about the different layers of job costing out on our 
build your numbers site. It's not really practical because you can't slice it and dice it in six different directions when you want to want to find out more information. The one thing I found out about company owners is they start out and say, oh, I want something really simple. Just, you know, all I want to do is see this. But then when they see one layer of information, then lots of times they go, well, yeah, but what about this? <laughs> and okay. what about that? And if you start trying to do everything in your own home developed spreadsheet system, Things can go wrong. Okay, spreadsheets are not infallible. You need to be building. You're in drinking all sorts from of a fire hose. Checks and balances and so on. When you can go out and buy software for not very much. Okay, so something like the QuickBooks products you can get for not all that much. So if you look at software, I'd say be sure to that you look for something that will do job costing for you because you're going to get so much more out of it than trying to develop. It's like, do you really want to try to invent your own wheel? <laughs> you know, it's it's been done. Go take advantage of what other folks have done. Now, did I miss part of the question? I no, just wanted to deal I, I with think the you hit it. Part. I mean, yeah. she asked about the different steps to do it, and I, I think we really hit on that. And just to pref, like, short an answer of how to get started with it. Right well, we have lots end, of but... training. I I will. Yeah, I will put in a plug for what we do. I have exactly. many hours of training, procedures, checklists, videos, blog articles on our site. So yeah, I mean, I'm. that's why I do what I do is to make it easier for people. And we'll be sharing on. Diane's resources links so that you can access those and, and check out what is gonna be a good fit for you. So on the last slide that I'll pull up, you guys can snap a picture of it, but I'm also gonna send you a PDF at the end and a copy of the recording and you'll be able to click right from those. And yeah, she lines it out really well. And obviously we're both going to plug for our products because they're sure. tried and true, but Diane's stuff is is really well put together. And when they fit um, together, you know, what yeah, Busy Busy exactly. does and what we do, you know, they're, exactly. they're intertwined in terms of what it does for mm -hmm. people. Yeah. And and we have a couple more questions. I, we wanted to keep it around 45 minutes, so we're we're getting there. And I'm going to hit on the other questions that we have in here. But I also want to want to plug Busy Busy with that and and what Diane said and how well we work together. The pricing with Busy Busy it's 10 bucks a month per active employee. And coming from the webinar, you you get a, a little deal there. So if you're interested in checking Busy Busy out and 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 working with both of us, grab the links that we put in the the chat and then I'll email you Diane's links to everything. And so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to help you guys do that. So we have a, a really good and, and detailed question here. Okay. So Rebecca is saying we work on time and materials and use job costing extensively for hours and receipts on our invoicing, but do not apply cost codes to payroll. We started doing that and it was pretty complicated. So we stopped because our markup seemed to be covering it. But it sounds like I should advise the boss to start doing this again. Do you agree? Yeah, I like to track, okay, and when I help people set up their job costing systems, I like to track labor separately from materials and contractors and other costs. Because having that information split out separately particularly when you get into estimate versus actual reports, you can see, oh, I estimated this much cost for our labor on, on this particular phase. And then now I see this is what we actually spent. And that could be a differential in number of hours. It could be a differential in who you had working on the job. It could be a differential in maybe some things popped up that you didn't anticipate, but keeping that labor split out on its own line, the labor cost is really useful. Okay, so yes, I would say keep That's your a... labor costs split out, but just don't make don't make the tracking overly complicated. Like I said, you know, maybe framing, okay, maybe roofing, okay, some big chunks of the job that people can say, yep, this is what I was working on. Mm -hmm. You can de you can estimate at a much more detailed level and then yeah. see, here's my detailed estimate, here's my actual on kind of a bigger chunk level, and then yeah. you can compare the two. For sure. And 
one of our attendees actually made a really great point in the chat, Richard. He said, don't start tracking lots of micro levels. Start small, go broad. Like, And so it's just, it's cool to see the attendees and, and participants feel the same way. Yeah, great points. And Matt has asked us a couple of questions. And so he's asked, where did it go? He asked if we'd go into any detail about how info you guys get in the field gets from busy, busy translated into QuickBooks for proper tracking in an accounting way. And so that's something that Diana and I do together all the time. First thing, and I'm sure Diana will hit on this, it depends on what QuickBooks you're using. But do you want to answer that from your point of view, Diane? And yeah, well, from the QuickBooks desktop standpoint, right now I'm not deep into QBO, okay? Because we can get do more detail in desktop. But at any rate, the time tracking from Busy Busy comes into the time sheet inside QuickBooks. And if you set up your payroll properly inside QuickBooks, doesn't mean you have to use Intuit Payroll, but we can use at no extra charge the payroll module. So if the time gets in there and you get your background payroll item set up properly, it will automatically job cost. So you go from time into the time sheet and the time sheet converts into payroll. Agreed. Richard, QBO can be can be difficult. Um, <laughs> That's why we're not oh, using it right now. So I'm not going to say never. Okay. I'm, busy, busy can still work with QBO, but I, I agree. They, they make it a little bit more difficult. So if you're using QBO, that's okay. We'll still, we'll still help you, but you I won't agree be able to that. get quite the same kind of details that, yeah. yeah. Um, Are we going to talk about labor burden, Bracken, at all? We didn't kind of ran out of time. I was trying to hit on everyone's questions, but. Okay. Um, well, let's do questions let's do first and at the end yeah, we can touch on it. Though. Let's do this last question. Okay. There's actually, there's two more questions I want to hit on really quickly. And then if you guys are still available, then we'll touch on labor burden and Diane will be able to, to give us some good insight on that. So okay. uh, follow-up question from Matt, what accounting slash job costing software do you suggest that works well with Busy Busy? So I'll answer on that quickly first. Busy Busy inherently does job costing if you're tracking time to the project and we can pull a lot of great reports for you. So I would recommend just using the Busy Busy app for, for that portion of it because it'll do both of those. But as far as accounting goes, Diane, I mean, we know QuickBooks Desktop is is awesome. So if you want to go into a little bit more detail on, on that, and that'd be, I think, really great. Yeah. So. And I think on the Busy Busy side, I mean, there are a few estimates that end up in the process if but if you pull all that information into QuickBooks you're dealing with the actual payroll <laughs> that comes through your company and it is a full blown accounting system so you're not only going to get your job costing reports but you're going to get your company wide reports you'll be able to see profit and loss by job based on accounts you'll be able to see your estimate versus actuals, you'll have the option to use purchase orders. So it's a multi-layered job costing can become multi-layered with lots of different pieces and parts fitting together. So you can move from very basic job costing inside QuickBooks up to a full-blown management system that QuickBooks can handle. And then the plugins, and I'm going to call it a plugin and add on whatever. You know, there are several out there like Busy Busy that add huge functionality to people in the field. Uh, so you can see a lot of information without actually being inside QuickBooks itself. But QuickBooks is the accounting system for your entire company, as well as doing the job costing and providing other information. So for sure. Okay, so for everybody who is available to stay on a little bit longer, we'd love to hit on some more of these questions. I would say we'll maybe take another 10 to 15 minutes. If you're not available to stay on, we have recorded this and we will be sending you a copy, but let's see if we can hit on a few of those other a few of those other questions and mm -hmm. before we dive right into that, for those of you who cannot stay, 
here is a, a copy of Diane's slide, and I'm going to send this out to you all in a PDF so you can actually access the, the links. But if you want to snap a picture of it so that you have it, I will be sending one out as well. I'll give everybody like 10 seconds to pull their phone out and hurry and snap a picture. And then, yeah, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to stop sharing. So everybody hurry and get your phones. Okay, and you don't have time, so I'm going to end it, but I'll send you a copy, I promise. Okay, Diane, let's hit on labor burden really quickly. I mean, okay. I, I know how important that is, and, and so I think that I'm glad that you brought it up because we had a list of questions set aside, but you guys have so many amazing questions, all of you awesome participants. So, um, and I'm happy to say, those, but you know, I'm happy to say, yeah. So, really quickly, labor burden. When I first started helping people do job costing, we were doing a great job. We got the gross compensation in and QuickBooks will automatically put your payroll taxes in for you if you set it up that way. And it can do certain benefits. Okay, but after I'd worked with people for, you know, maybe the first, and I'm sorry it took me as long to figure this out, but maybe it took me six months and I'm looking at things, I'm going, gosh, there's there's a lot of this other cost out here sitting in non-job specific. It's all production costs and it's all related to employees, but it's not getting assigned out to jobs. So we actually started doing journal entries and saying, okay, well, let's uh, figure out how much this is and then we'll split it out in a spreadsheet and then we'll do a journal entry to assign it back to a job. And in fact, there are many other costs that accompany your employees talking about, okay, for instance, holiday, vacation, sick time, um, maybe health benefits, maybe tools, uniforms. And I mean, there's many cell phones. I mean, if you just think about what are all the costs that it takes for people to be out working in the field and doing what you hired them to do, that's not showing up in those job costs. So. I decided, gosh, you know, QuickBooks can do so many cool things. I'll bet there's a way we can trick it. If if we could give it the right percentage for each employee to add on, we could probably trick it to put that burden in to the payroll process without having to do manual journal entries. And so that's what we figured out how to do. And I do have a product that will help you figure out for each employee what their true burdened cost is. So let's say somebody costs you $20 an hour, but in fact, they might actually be costing you $32 an hour when you think about all those other costs that you have to carry. So figuring that out is critical and we can get QuickBooks, trick QuickBooks into posting that automatically for you. That's the Yeah, I think, suite. I mean, labor, labor burden is it's very important and it ties directly into to everything that we're we're talking about. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, just a lot of questions. I think this is really cool to see all of these come through. We had one at the very beginning. So, Scott, if you're still on here, we'll answer this as well. And I'm I'm hoping that it's something that that you can possibly answer, Diane, with because I know you're an expert in QuickBooks Desktop. And so, if you can't answer this, I know I can't. So, hopefully, you can. In QBO, do you ever use tags to track project costs? Do you I, do you know? The answer is, I don't know. I okay. get certified in QBO every either. year, and yeah. every time I do, I go, yeah, not quite ready for prime time when it comes mm -hmm. to job costing. And so, I mean, there are a lot of very cool features, particularly in QBO mm -hmm. Advanced now. So, yep, I'm not the right expert on that at this point you might want to go check out on youtube a fellow by the name of hector garcia he puts okay. a lot of qbo information out there so you might go out that's and cool see what you can find yeah well and i i put off answering that one because i'm like i have no idea i don't i don't get into into that detail of it and i know that you're you know quickbooks desktop ride or die so i wanted to just still throw it out there and just in case mm -hmm. but Okay, so Lee is asking if we can compare gross profit in jobs from individual workers or specific crews. In Busy Busy, you can very, very easily coordinate different reports that will grab that. And as long as the time's being tracked there, then then yeah, we can we can get you that, that info. 
pretty easily. So yeah. same thing in QuickBooks in, in desktop, we can use certain fields and do filters and so on. So as long as we can figure out what kinds of things you want to track, and then we can use certain fields to attach to certain jobs, and then we can do filters and custom reports and things like that to let you know. Yeah, yeah. So those are all, all that stuff is is available through both of us. Let's see. You guys are cracking me up. I've never had this many people like chatting back and forth with each other. So <laughs> scrolling through here, trying to trying to pull the questions. Let's see. So, how are you using QuickBooks Desktop with remote contractors? I do not work out of the contractor's office. I'm assuming that's from uh, some type of of admin position. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So somebody who's handling the bookkeeping. Well, there are a couple of ways to do that. The one we most often recommend is to use a hosted service, where QuickBooks Desktop sits on the hosting service. We have an affiliate that we work with that we like for hosting purposes. So you can reach out to us and ask us about that. That's one way. Another option is you can, there are certain remote access processes that you can use. I'm not, this is why we have a tech team, okay? I'm not really techie on that, but there are a few services. I think there's one that's like log me in that lets you access somebody else's computer. Of course, the computer's got to be up and running and so on. So there's also one other one. And right now the name is escaping me. But if you reach out to us, I can give you a couple of options where you can access your client's file via the internet. <laughs> okay. But they have to be out while you're in. And, and vice yeah. versa. So yeah. Well, e email. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have any idea. So yeah, email. Yeah, email we've got Diane a couple of names. Yeah. We'll include all that contact info. If you didn't snap a picture on the screen, I'll include that in the email that we send out. Okay. So looking here, another question, and we've hit on this a little bit since it was asked, but what are some challenges that you see in job costing? I mean, it's it's kind of broad, but just top of the head, what do you think? One of the challenges I see is that people do a little bit of job costing and then kind of get misled by the information they're seeing. So if not everything is assigned to a job like it should be, then you're not going to get accurate results. Another thing that can happen is that people are invoicing ahead they're invoicing their clients ahead or behind of their actual cost so they can start having some really big swings in the way their gross profit is looking. So there are ways to deal with that. We we use percentage of completion entries to help people understand what their true profitability is. So, you know, the, there are some wrinkles that we have to work your way through, but having Having some information on your job costing is certainly better than not having any at all. Having accurate information is superior <laughs> to most anything. So there was a quote I heard once that said, having accurate bad information is better, is far superior to having inaccurate good information. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it so, does. Because at I, least if it's bad information and it's accurate, you can do something about it. Yeah, at least you yeah. can weed through it. And yeah. I think it's the same with a lot of things as, as far as challenges with job costing goes. It's You're going to get out of it what you put into it. And that's something that in the beginning, it takes a, a decent amount of sit down to get everything set up. But once it's set up, the management of it is, it really is pretty slick. And so I think... Yeah, I mean, same with anything. You're gonna get out of it what you what you put into it. So it's and pretty logical, again, you know. Yeah, with, you're not. Go it's ahead. a logical process. Once it's set up, I have a lot of people say, "Oh, oh, now I get it. Oh, okay." I, you know, I mean, it, it's kind of a delight when everything's yeah. going into the right buckets and they can see how the pieces and parts fit together. It's it's fun. Yeah. Well, and you guys aren't alone when you're using. Busy Busy or Info Plus or a combination of us, like we're here to help you out. We want you guys to succeed. Otherwise, it's like not really helpful for 
you don't have less either. <laughs> so Matt asked another question. He's a current client of Busy Busy. So we, we love to have him on here as well. Oh gosh, I lost it. Where did I go? He was asking you, Diane, for your perfect suite of of tech. On here, let me here it is. Diane, in your perfect world, what software would you best pair with Busy Busy for the ultimate suite of construction business management? Yeah, at this time, I would say Busy Busy, QuickBooks Desktop, and then there are several. I'm I'm really investigating one one plugin, but I'm not going to necessarily name it until I've done a little bit more work with it. But there are a couple of if you guys go out and look. Co-construct was out there. It's been acquired by Builder Trend. I've heard some people feel that it's getting a little complex and not that easy to work with. So I'm, we're going to be, and, and we've actually had, well, I guess I can name it because we did a webinar with them. I'd like you guys to maybe come to our site and take a look at the Job Tread webinar. Job Tread has had a lot of really, really good reviews. I'm not an expert in it, but it's looking pretty good to me. So I'd say, you know, you just have to sit down and think through what you want. That's the biggest thing mm -hmm. is, to, is to have in mind, do I need people in the field to see certain things? Do I need my customers to be able to do certain things? Do, they, do my customers need to be able to do selections? There are a variety of different problems out there that QuickBooks in and of itself or Busy Busy in and of itself likely can't totally solve, but you need to kind of get that combination in your mind of, you know, where are you having sticky issues? <laughs> okay. And then start looking. And, you know, anybody that works with us, we we help them go look at what the other options are too. Yeah. See what might be a good fit. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to give a solid recommendation without seeing all of your needs. So yeah, there are so many plugins um, out there right now. So yeah, yeah. Well, we have gone over. There's still a couple of questions that we haven't had a chance to hit on, and we'll, we'll reach out to you guys. But overall, really appreciate everybody's participation. I am very happy with this webinar. I think it was extremely beneficial for everyone who was able to stay. The, the entire time until now, and even for those who had to hop off at the 45 minute mark. So grateful for everybody. Yeah. We, Diane and I love an excuse to get together and, and chat about all, all things job costing and construction accounting. So exactly, um, always great to do that. And I'll let Diane give her plug, but we'll, I, like I've said 50 times, we'll be handing out, or handing out, here you go. We'll be sending out all the info to contact both of us and check out both of of what what we have to offer and really the courses diane has put together they're incredible so please take some time to look over those emails that we send out and and take advantage of of some of the things we have to offer you guys diane come visit us at buildyournumbers.com or you can email us at help at infoplusacct.com <laughs> our actual company name is infoplus accounting but we ha our site is buildyournumbers.com. So you can, if you come over to buildyournumbers.com, you'll find plenty of ways to reach out directly to us. So, so happy to have you yep. here today with us and hope we answered a few questions. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Have a great week and we'll be in touch shortly. Thanks, yeah, Thank you, Diane. Appreciate you. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.